Images on the web are surprisingly tricky. From a layout point of view, one of the more difficult parts to deal with is the size and aspect ratio. The images we use are rarely the same size or aspect ratio as the web page design. The problem is compounded by the need to support multiple viewports that our image will need to load. We typically deal with the size issue by making the image size responsive, which is done by setting the max width of the image to 100%. However, dealing with aspect ratios is not as simple. Images have an intrinsic aspect ratio based on the actual width and height of the image file. If we try to force an image into a box of a different aspect ratio, then the image becomes skewed and deformed. What we need is a way to not just control the size, but also the aspect ratio by cropping the image where it is too tall or too wide for the aspect ratio that we need. In this lesson, we will be building the frame primitive, which frames out visual media like an image or a video and forces it into the aspect ratio needed for the design which, without distorting the image. In this lesson, we're going to be building a new arrivals card like this. In the above widget, the image is cropped at a one by one aspect ratio, or in other words, a square. And it will also need to be responsive to the size of the parent container by growing or shrinking accordingly. So what we're going to do now, we see we, we've got this new arrival component. This is where we're going to do all of our work. And it's being exported inside of this grid so we can have multiple new arrival objects. This image of the shirt is in this public folder under assets and there's this details which that's where we're, we're getting this a little blouse $35.99 detail right there so let's go ahead and start building our frame so we're gonna import styled from styled components and with the magic of copy and paste let's bring that in so let's go ahead and put it around our image and then we'll talk about what's going on here oops so what we have here is this outer div, this frame, it's being sent as a position relative. And then we're for now hard coding it to 18 rems. Now this is not a long-term solution because as we move it around that we want this to be centered in there. So we need this width and height to change. But we're just going to set it for that way for now, just to create that square effect. And then what we're doing inside here is we're saying all the direct children, which is this image tag, we're going to set it as position absolute. We're going to set top, bottom, left, and right to zero. That's going to pin the object to all the sides of this outer frame here. And then we have this width and height that we're going to set that as 100% and 100% for both. This is especially for image and video tags. They need that little extra setting here to force the image to live inside of this box. Now, the reason why we don't have to put any units on this is because zero is always zero. It doesn't matter. Zero rem, view heights, pixels, whatever. Anything is always zero. So zero is one of those unique things in CSS that you can just put zero and you don't have to put the units. So now we have this put inside this box, but now we've distorted the image to get it in there. So we're going to tackle a couple different things here. First thing we're going to tackle is setting the aspect ratio. Instead of hard coding this width and height to be 18 rems, let's just set an aspect ratio and let the browser decide how big, how tall, and how wide it should be. Now, the good news is there is a property called aspect ratio and you can come in here and if let's say you wanted a 16 by 9 aspect ratio you can set it just like that now you notice me setting this aspect ratio let me get rid of that this 
aspect ratio is not working. Be that's because we're in Safari. And if we look at can I use this aspect ratio is available in Chrome and Edge. And as of the day of this recording, it's also available in Firefox. But Safari has not yet implemented that. So there is another way we can handle this. Um, well, the best way is we want it. We want to use the aspect ratio by default, if at all possible. But if not, we want to fall back to an alternate form. So I'm going to copy this and we'll talk through how this is working after I put it in here. So what we're doing here is first of all, we're off of prompts. We're going to grab a value. We have this prompt called ratio and it's going to be an array and we're taking the first value and we're assigning it to N, which basically means numerator and this other property we're assigning to a custom property called D, which is denominator. And if we don't provide that property, we're going to default to one. Now, for those browsers that support aspect ratio, we're going to go ahead and pull those values out. We're going to get the N for numerator and D for denominator. And then we're going to do what's called a feature query. And we can actually go at supports. And in this case, we're throwing in the not because we want to, we're checking if something doesn't support this. So this basically is the equivalent of JavaScript's bang operator that allows it to take on the opposite effect. The, this turns out to be false. So that's, it's the equivalent of that. And we're just going to, we don't have to check these values specifically. We're just going to check, does that work? And basically what happens is this is saying, does CSS understand what I'm putting in here? And if CSS does understand it, or in this case, because we're checking for the not, if it doesn't understand it, then it's going to use this CSS. And then we're doing an interesting thing here. The padding bottom. This is, this has been a a trick, a hack, whatever you want to call it, that's been around for at least a decade. And it takes advantage of the fact that padding that's set either on the top or the bottom is always relative to the width of the element itself. So in other words, if we set a padding to be 25%, it's 25% of the width of the element, not the height. So using that, we can calculate what we need to do to calculate that is we actually flip these numbers. If we, we take the denominator divided by the numerator of an aspect ratio and then multiply that by a percentage, we get the percentage we need to get that same aspect ratio. Now, if you're not familiar with aspect ratios, by the way, we have the numerator and denominator. This corresponds to the width and this corresponds to the height. So if we have 16 pixels by nine pixels, that means for every 16 pixels wide, we're gonna have nine pixels tall or that same exact ratio. We could actually have more or less than that 16 pixels, but we're gonna keep that same amount of ratio of no matter how many pixels wide we are, we're gonna have a ratio of 16 by nine. So once again, we're getting the numerator, the denominator from our ratio. We're setting the aspect ratio by default. And if it doesn't support it, like Safari, then we're going to use this padding bottom technique that will force the height of the element to be a ratio of the width of the element. If we come in here to the frame, we're going to set a ratio of one to one. This should fix it. So if we wanted to, for example, have something be 16 pixels wide by nine pixels tall, you can see that's happening automatically, even though 
aspect ratio is not supported by Safari. So we're having that. We're falling back, and if we were to inspect this element for that is set based on this calculation, if we look at the computed padding right there is 192 pixels, which is a relative amount to the pixels wide it is. Awesome. So that works great. The problem is we're still distorting our image, unfortunately. Let's put this back to one by one. So now we need to fix that. And to fix that, we're going to need to move this width and height out of here. We're going to just put it under a specific category just for images. And there's a reason why. The reason is we're also going to do this thing called object fit cover. Basically, we want you to cover this area and any part that is outside of the bounds of the box that we've set, crop it. So we're just going to cover it, but don't mess with the aspect ratio, the inherent aspect ratio of the image. Now, we also want to take advantage of the fact that maybe we don't want, we don't have an image. Maybe we have something else. Maybe we have another div that we want to do something similar with. And so we're going to go ahead and force that item to be display flex, center it, both in the just fine align, and then we're going to do overflow hidden. And this does the exact same thing as this does, but it does it for objects that are not images in video. This allows an image to maintain its aspect ratio, but the browser will crop the part that doesn't fit inside the box that it's trying to support. And now there we go. We have exactly what we need to get this working just the way we want. Now there is actually one little tweak that we want to do right now. We're forcing this ratio to be a one to one, but sometimes we don't want to set a ratio itself. Sometimes we want to allow the environment to set the width and height of this box for us, but we still want to maintain the aspect ratio and this cover effect. So we're going to do one final little tweak here. We're going to take all this part right here, and we're only going to conditionally render this part, this aspect ratio part, if a ratio is actually provided. And this will give us the freedom to not have a ratio and then we could i'm going to hard code this for now just so you can see the effect we can set the height to be 100 pixels and the width to be 50 pixels and in this case this is not a great example because i don't, don't want to This isn't exactly what we wanted here, but let's, let's hard code this to maybe like 500 pixels. You can see 500 by, by 550. We can do different things and this will force the aspect ratio of the image underneath to be exactly what we, the same, it won't distort it, but it will still fit within the square. Let's go back to the one by one ratio though because that's what the design wanted perfect if you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video